Hello everybody, I'm Nick and in this video we're going to see a new feature in C Sharp 11 which actually builds on top of the behavior of the name of keyword in C Sharp and it addresses my only and biggest problem with that feature because it was rendering it unusable in a very specific situation which is actually very very common based on how the direction of C Sharp is going so I'm glad they did that and this feature at the time of recording this video and by the time it actually comes out isn't really documented. I saw it in the brush that they have and I downloaded Preview 5 so we can have a hands-on play with it. If you like the content and you want to see more, make sure you subscribe, ring the notification bell and for more training, check out nickchapsas.com. Just a small reminder and before I move on, I will be running a workshop in NDC Oslo 2022 this year and it will be all about effective testing in C Sharp and .NET. We're going to set the right foundations for unit testing, integration testing, performance testing, mutation testing. It will be for two days and it will be absolutely awesome. Check the website down below and don't worry about the ticket price. The company you work for will almost certainly pay for it. So speak with your manager and I hope to see you there. So let's take a look at what I have here. So like I said, I'm running on .NET Preview 5 at this point. And I just want to show you in the CS Pro that I have the lang version set to Preview and the target framework set to .NET 7. So let me quickly recap what NameOf is and what the biggest problem with NameOf is. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to create a new class and I'm going to say guard over here and I'm just going to use a very simple example. I want to guard against null or white space for a string which means that if I see it I want to throw an argument exception. So this will look something like this public static void throw if null or white space and this of course needs to be nullable because we're using nullable reference types and then I'm going to say that if string dot is null or white space and I'm going to pass down the parameter then throw new argument exception and the argument exception accepts two things the first one is the message so argument can't be null or white space and then the second one is actually if we go here in the signature and let me just quickly show you that is the parameter name and the parameter name is used to give a better error message when the exception is thrown so the parameter name for us is param so you would copy that and then just do this and what would happen if i did execute it and i did throw an exception is god dot throw if null or white space and pass down just null uh, to throw and if i run this as you can see it says argument can be null or white space and then i have parameter param with the name of the parameter which is very helpful for me i can just see exactly which parameter was null and i can go and fix it now what i can do with the name of parameter is instead of doing just a string literal here a constant i can say name of and point to param and the reason why this is very important is because if i had just that and then i did the refactoring here and said arg instead of param rider is smart enough and it detects that this and this is the same thing and fixes it for me but if my IDE was not that good or if you're using VS Code or something else that doesn't support this then you would actually get a bug because this parameter would be um, arg but this would stay param which would be a lie and actually Rider also gives me a warning here that it cannot resolve this parameter but it still compiles so the best thing you can do is say name of Arg, and then this gives you a compile time constant based on the name of the argument which is great but here is the problem in .NET 6 we got the caller argument expression which allows me to point to an argument in a method over here by name and then I can actually change the param name over here to be directly retrieved by this which means that if I replace this name off and I go back and I change this to a nullable string of let's say name equals and let's have it be null so the string is called name and we're gonna pass down the name then that will actually not only do the check on the value but it will also capture the name of the parameter coming in which is better than me having the name of inside which only refers to this fella over here so this will always be arg if i don't pass this this is a way better solution but here's the problem this thing here again recognize my id and if it doesn't match the parameter my id will be like duh, 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 it's not matching so this will have no effect it needs to be matched to this but i cannot use name of 
AUG here. Because these contexts are different. This exists within its own bubble, and this exists within its own bubble. And I cannot get the name of an argument in another argument, which is a very big problem because these color attributes, like color expression, work in the exact same way. So this can be quite the problem. But .NET 7 fixes that. Now, even though my ID doesn't support it because it's not a supported feature yet officially, I can go ahead in the terminal and I can say .NET run. And this compiles perfectly. And it does get the name correctly by matching this name off to this argument. If this was different, then this would not work. Build failed, it is not supported. But when I do match it with name of and I do save and I run it again, then it works perfectly, exactly as I wanted. So I really can't wait for this one to be out. It is so, so useful and I really like that they're putting the effort to fix the small things by adding small quality of life features on things that amount to something bigger. Really, really good stuff. Well, that's all I had for you for this video. Thank you very much for watching. Special thanks to my Patreons for making this video possible. If you want to support me as well, you're going to find the link in the description down below. Leave a like if you like this video, subscribe for more content like this and ring the bell as well. And I'll see you in the next video. Keep coding.